Tater Ash. Bubble and Squeak. We have a lot of questions about jelly deals. Good gosh, why would you ruin a perfectly good bread with raisins? <laughs> hey guys, I'm Eric. And I'm Grace. We're the Wandering Ravens. We are a couple of digital nomads who have been wandering around the world for over three years, and we make videos on this YouTube channel about British culture. If that's a topic that interests you, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon so that you can get notified every time we release a new video. Today we are introducing you to 10 foods that we had never heard of before going to the UK. Since visiting the UK last year, we have heard about a lot of British foods, both while we were in the UK and also from you guys in the comment sections, which we have never heard of before. And so today we are sharing some of the biggest names with you. Plofman's Lunch. Just kidding. No, 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 no. I know. It's Plowman's. Plowman's Lunch. Plowman's Lunch. Plowman's Lunch. I just wanted to scare you. Because <laughs> we don't spell plow like this in the US. We don't. We do P-L-O-W. A plowman's lunch consists of bread, cheese, onions, and pickles. And butter, of course. <laughs> this sounds like my type of lunch. We actually had this while we were visiting the UK. Mm -hmm. We were invited to a friend's house and this is what they served for lunch. It was like, there was a platter of bread, there was different types of cheese, there was onions. And butter as well. Mm -hmm. and thick, thick slices of butter. <laughs> yes, and it was really, really good. We'd never seen lunch served in this Plowman's lunch sort of format, but it was really, really enjoyable, a lot of fun. Definitely glad we had that experience in the UK. It was kind of like eating a sandwich, but disassembled. Because mm -hmm. you got all the ingredients there, they're just not in a sandwich form. You're eating them individually. Except not the butter. Except for yeah. me, because I was eating the <laughs> butter. Like, <laughs> <laughs> More butter, please. <laughs> Jellied eels. Jellied eels are a traditional English dish which originated in London during the 18th century. The dish consists of chopped eels that are boiled in a spiced stock. The stock is then allowed to cool and set, forming a jelly. Yeah, this is not one that we have had the pleasure hmm? of eating ourselves, but it sounds, definitely sounds exciting. Would you eat jellied eels? I've eaten eel before, but it was like teriyaki eels, and that was good. Yeah. The jellied eels, ooh. Something about know. it being in a jelly and then also being cold sounds really inappetizing. Yeah. What do you eat this on? Do you just eat it by the spoonful or do you spread it on toast? Yeah, or is it a side for a main dish? Mm -hmm. Like mushy peas? We have a lot of questions about jelly deals, and we don't mean to be rude. This isn't us being like, ah, British food is terrible, because there is a lot of British food which is absolutely delicious, as you can see in this video right here. There is a lot about British cuisine which we absolutely love, but this is just one dish which makes us go, huh? huh? What the feck? What the feck? <laughs> Tater ash. From what we understand, Tater ash is made from leftover Sunday roast or beef roast or corned beef. The vegetables usually include carrots, red cabbage, and onions. I hope we're getting this one right. Yeah. yeah, I'm not really sure exactly, but this is what we've been led to believe. Yes, this is what people have told us in the comments. And again, this is a dish which we had never heard of before going to the UK. Gala pie or Gala pie. I'm not Gala? sure which it is. Gala? Let us know, please. We saw a lot of these in the UK in shops and things like that. Basically, it's a pork pie, but it's in a loaf instead of a pie pan. And inside of this pork pie are hidden little hard boiled eggs. So when you eat this, you get a cut of pork as well as a cut of egg. It's a little bit confusing for me. I don't know, meat and egg. Usually like you have one or the other because you know, they're both sources of protein. So usually yeah. you choose one or the other, but in this one, you just get them all. You get all the protein mm -hmm. in one go. This is a very hearty dish, mm -hmm. very hearty. Malt loaf. Malt loaves are sweetened bread that are made with malt extract as the primary ingredient. It has kind of a chewy texture and from what I've seen often comes with raisins sprinkled around inside. Good gosh, why would you ruin a perfectly good bread with raisins? <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a fan of raisins. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. yeah. But besides that, you pick the raisins out, and the malt loaf is really it's delicious. Perfect. It's yeah. brilliant. From what we've seen, it is usually served spread with butter along with tea. More butter, please. <laughs> <laughs> Bread and dripping. Dripping is an animal fat produced from the bones and carcasses of pigs or cows, kind of like lard. And this is one which we haven't eaten, but our British friends have told us that it is served cold and you usually have a, a can of drippings or a jar of drippings, and then you just take it out and you spread it on toast, like 
like kind of like Marmite. Maybe it might have a similar salty, meaty texture. That might be kind of what it is. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So is it kind of gelatinous? Is it like an blubbery, like animal fat? Or I think it's is... more like bacon grease. Bacon grease. Okay. Yeah. Then it kind of makes sense, I guess, because we spread butter, which is just fat as well, yeah. onto our bread and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, it's basically a different kind of butter. <laughs> more butter, please. Well, doesn't sound bad. Yeah, it doesn't sound like something that would taste bad. Initially, it just sounds a bit odd to, Amer to our American ears, mm -hmm. just because of the, the nature of putting animal grease but then when you think about it it's just like butter it's yeah. a kind of butter yeah it, and is. it makes a lot of sense we have not had bread and dripping before but if i ever have the opportunity i will give it a go and i will let you guys know what i think i anticipate that i would actually like this me too yeah well if you More like the butter, butter <laughs> scotch eggs Believe it or not, we had actually never heard of scotch eggs before we landed in the UK. Of course, then we saw it advertised in many different places, but we were wondering for a long time, what is a scotch egg? Because from the outside, it looks like a pastry or a kind of donut. You know? Yeah, it kind of looks like a donut. Yeah. I never thought of that, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So imagine our surprise when we found out that there was actually a hard-boiled or soft-boiled egg inside of that bad boy, and the whole capsule, the whole thing, is very, very delicious. Because think about it, you got an egg wrapped in meat, coated in breadcrumbs, and deep fried. Like, that is an American's dream food, if ever I've heard of one. Really need to bring the scotch eggs over to the United States because those would go over big time. Supermarkets would, like Whole Foods, I could see them being <laughs> sold in there, like package of, package scotch, of scotch eggs, eggs. that are gluten-free and vegan somehow. Mm -hmm. you, it's in the United States, so you could sell these things by the dozen. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Just a carton, you open it up and there's scotch it's eggs all inside. scotch eggs. Branston pickle. Branston pickle is made from a variety of vegetables, including carrots, cauliflower, onions, and rutabaga. These vegetables are pickled in a sauce that is made from vinegar, tomato, apple, and spices. Initially, when I first saw this, I was a little put off because, you know, it's this brown, wet substance, all mm -hmm. messy looking. But I did try it, and I actually really enjoyed it. Was it sweeter, or was it kind of... It was sweet. Okay. I think there's, de there's definitely sugar in it. It's got a really great combination of sweet, tangy, vinegary deliciousness all packaged up in this little Branston bottle. That's also something that would sell well in the States. I think it would. The UK's reputation for having bad food is horrendously misplaced. Bubble and squeak. The first time I heard bubble and squeak mentioned, I actually thought it was a drink, like kind of like a bubbly champagne or something mm. to that effect. Mm -hmm. I had seen so many of our commenters mentioning bubble and squeak and how you had it the day after. I think somebody said you had it on Boxing Day, the day after Christmas. And oh, so I did. just yeah. assumed bubble and squeak was just, you know, the leftover champagne or something like that. <laughs> What it actually is, is a traditional British breakfast made from cabbage and potatoes. Now I got a question about the name, Bubble and Squeak, because what that makes me think is that, does it make noise? Ooh, or is it like a rhyming slang name? That's Where does the name say. come from? <laughs> How many times can we interrupt each other in one minute? <laughs> and your timer starts now. Put us in well, the Guinness no, World Records. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling them to put us in the Guinness World Book Records. Oh. For interrupting each other. Uh, what? 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 What is that? Hey, hey, say it again. Sorry, I'm sitting here. I can't Bubble take you seriously. Squeak. Your face. <laughs> <laughs> All that to say, why is it called Bubble and Squeak? Scoose Stew. And I really hope I'm saying that right. I couldn't find a pronunciation guide anywhere online, so we're going with Scoose for now. Scoose. Stew. This is a hearty stew that comes from Liverpool and is made from lamb or beef with carrots, onions, and potatoes. Ooh. This is amazing. And from what we understand, it was originally a dish eaten by sailors from Northern Europe, but then it eventually found its home in Liverpool and that's where it's famous for being from now. So it wasn't originally a Liverpool dish, but then Liverpool it eventually kind of like acquired went it. there, and now it became a Liverpool thing. I love any sort of stew, so this is right yeah. in my happy place. It sounds so good. Real quick, before we respond to the top comments from our last video... A huge thank you to John Ketty, our chuffed virtuoso. We couldn't have made this video without you, and we appreciate you, John. Thank you. Okay, time for us to read you guys some of our favorite comments from the last video we did. And in case you haven't seen it yet, that video is called 10 Things Americans Don't Understand About the UK, and you can watch it right here. If you haven't seen it yet, go watch it. It was a hoot. Thank you 
you so much to everyone who explained salad cream to us. If you don't know what salad cream is, well then here's a great explanation. Salad cream is essentially mayonnaise with a different mix in volume of ingredients. There's more vinegar in salad cream and less in mayo, more oil in mayo and less in salad cream. We use it for salads, hence the name. It's sort of similar to ranch or salad dressing, just in a creamier, saucier form. Hope this helps. That did help. Thank you. Also, Jeremy shared a history fun fact about salad cream with us, and Jeremy wrote, Salad cream was made as a replacement for mayonnaise during the war, as eggs were in short supply and people developed a taste for it. I like that. Enlightening. Yeah. It makes sense. And I do like mayonnaise, so I imagine that I would like salad cream. Next time we're in the UK, I promise to try some. Next up, Tony explained why some in the UK pronounce lieutenant as lieutenant. U and V used to be written the same. Lieutenant is two French words from Latin joined together. When the British adopted it, lieutenant became lieutenant. Then some guy called the Webster wrote a dictionary and put spelling over pronunciation. Too complicated to have a pronunciation sounding different to the spelling, right? By the way, the British pronunciation is not universal in the UK. Either pronunciation can be used. Oh, oh that's good to know. I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, I actually thought that all birds said lieutenant. So did I. So this comes from a bit of French. If this was a French word, how would you pronounce it? Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Maybe. So, okay, that, that makes sense then. Why it would have been translated as an F. Next, Brian shared with us the history behind the colorful phrase that is used in the UK to knock someone up, which is definitely not how it's used in the States. <laughs> no. In case you don't know, in the US, the phrase to knock someone up means to impregnate them. Knock up comes from olden times, a few hundred years ago, before people had alarm clocks. Workers who tended to live close to their factory or workplace were awoken by a knocker up. An employee who would go up and down local streets of workers' houses, knock on their doors to wake them up for work. Often a rich employer would build streets of houses for their employees close to the factory, mill, mine, etc. Wow, okay, so that is very interesting. I didn't I didn't realize that it was a literal knock. Job. Yeah, someone went around and knocked on people's houses. And I'm guessing this wasn't just a few hundred years ago, but also more recently, say, early 1900s or in the 18th cent 19th century mm -hmm. yeah how would you like it for it to be your your profession to knock people up i feel if you were the designated knocker upper everyone would hate you because it's like bad news come to work <laughs> feck off you knocker upper <laughs> Also, between the time when we shot this video originally and when we're shooting this clip right now, we hit 15,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. 15K? As you guys know, that was a big goal for us, was hitting 15K in May, which is pretty crazy for us because that is 50% of our channel size. Because yeah. we hit 10,000, it took us, basically it took us three years to hit 10,000. Mm -hmm. And then in one month, we went 50% more and hit 15. Yeah, that is crazy. And you guys are the best. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed over the last month. We really appreciate all of you. And welcome to our little corner of the internet. We're so excited that you're here. And we can't wait to get to know you better in the comments under this video. You know, 15K is kind of a big deal. Should we do something to celebrate? Mm. If you guys have any ideas about what we should do to celebrate hitting 15,000 subscribers, drop those down in the comments below. Again, I'm Eric. And I'm Grace. We're the Wandering Ravens. And if you want to help us spend less time at our day jobs and more time creating these videos for you all to enjoy, head on over and join us on Patreon. We will also be hosting a live stream this upcoming Ooh. Saturday. So if you want to get in on that, link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate each and every one of you, and we will see you in the next video. Bisous!